will get you nowhere. Realize you got favor? Realize you got a fight? Realize you got a focus? Focus on that. Finish what you start. You get with it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 23. It says this. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put off, put on, excuse me, the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Read number 27 with me. Neither give place to, neither give place to the devil. You got to live by faith. Some things God is involving you to do, and you got to do it, and do it with a good attitude. Turn with me to Genesis 2. In Genesis 2, there are several verses that I want to read to you, and I use one of them to set the stage for the last couple of weeks. Genesis 2 and 15. Why don't you start there? Matter of fact, 2 and 5. Back up and let's do that. Genesis 2 and 5. It says this. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. I want to explain it again. There was no man to cultivate what God put in his hand. There was no woman available to farm out what God put in her hand. There was nobody to work the plan that God put in, the, in his heart. There was nobody to build and develop what God had given you. What has God given you and what are you doing with it? Now go to verse number 15. It says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Same principle. To dress it and to keep it means to cultivate, to till the soil. What does that mean? I look out in the garden. Garden is just not an easy task. It's so good to be able to be with those big old pretty gardens that we love to eat the fruit and come out of it. But I tell you what, ants, they're from the devil. We, they're from the devil. You pick them out. And you got to get down and get in and pick them out, and then the next day they got to take a bus back up on you. And then it's hot, and then everybody in your house cool and calm and collected, and they come out high your guard and they ain't doing nothing to come out there to help you. What do you look like today? Me and them guns don't be ready. They got nothing. We love to eat the green. My mother-in-law, she got on the phone right now. You can't grow no greens in the summertime. I said, I can show you that I can tell you. I always let her know. My ground is God. I love green from the so green. What kind of green? They ain't going to taste good. I can show you that I can tell What are you doing with what God put in your hands? But everybody said, I don't care what everybody else said. What are you doing with what God has given you? God wanted a man in that garden to dress it and keep it. Now, now get the picture. The God of the whole universe who could have automatically watered the garden and made sure that whatever he wanted was whatever the way he wanted it, but what he did. Remember, he said, I'm going to use Mitchell to make sure this is the way that I want it to go. I'm going 
going to use key cash to make sure charity gets to where she needs to get to. What are you doing with what God put in your hand? Verse number 16. And the Lord God commanded, say commanded. Amen. Say it loud, say commanded. Amen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Amen. Everything has consequences. And whatever God tells you to do or not do, because he loves you, because he's concerned about you, because he's gracious to you, but he is not going to ignore his word because you throw it off in your mind. But this is what I want to do. I don't feel like. I know what you said, but that was my mind for the longest time. I don't know you just to preach. Y'all heard me say, I was going to say, Lord, I've done it. Everything I'm doing better. I know you did my life. I know you get the name. But preach it. My mind is not right. I don't want to hold some folks. I always see the way it's happening. And I'm just doing it on the piano. You say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good on the piano. You just say, right on the piano. You can go and deal with all that. I don't know. I don't know your words. I got to be doing that. Somebody's going to come in there. All that knowledge and all that spiritual, 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 they don't come in there. <laughs> and then I'll go to do all that kind of stuff. Oh, you like all that kind of stuff. Lord, you know I'll do that kind of stuff. I'll be like that. Lord, just quiet. And then one of my things is saying, do I know what you did? I was going out about a while ago, and I was going to have to sit one guy in front of the truck, and every preacher coming in, I said, I don't know if they have to be, they would agree with you. They ain't dealt with no one. They walk out there. I said, they go. walk out of the house. I ain't doing it. I walk out of the house. He said, okay, John. <laughs> John? <laughs> he was trying to fall off the horn in the sea. He was in the boat. That ain't no fish. I said, well, let me, and I pray that that's just awful. Sometimes we don't know what we want. Sometimes God is trying to protect us when he tells us don't do this. Yes. Sometimes he's trying to die to you when he says do this, that, and the other. Is he in control of your life right against him? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Do what he says to do. Do what he says to do. I know. And let him get the glory in your life. Say, I hear you, preacher. I hear you. Verse number 17, 18. Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. I was talking to this little couple the other day, and I said, Now, God was so committed to making sure that this man did what he needed to do. This is what God is telling this man. I know what I've given you is too much for you to handle. I know you need some help. I'm going to send you some help. She don't need something that you can't even imagine. What kind of help I'm going to send you? I'm going to send you some help. And every time you look, you're going to say, Woo! 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 Already has in mind how he's going to help you when you get started. And when you would fight. And if you would focus. And if you would go on despite the difficulty. Finish it out. He got some help waiting on you. All right. I'm almost through because we ran out of time. Go to John chapter 5. I had a whole lot to tell you in John. I'm going to have to cut it short. In John chapter 5, verse number 5, I started off telling you about, that's the gospel of John 5. I started off telling you about this story where, matter of fact, I got to read a portion of it so I can catch the people that didn't hear the first part of it. 
John 5 and 5. Is that what I told y'all? Thank you, Dean. John 5 and 5. Is that what I told y'all? <laughs> All right. That's the other thing I want you to know. I said it on last week, but I'm saying it again. Sometimes this man is about to come to this point. Young people are really wanting to hear me. Sometimes in life, there is this turning point. You can't keep going the way you're going. Not just young people, but I'm talking to some people in here that are a little bit older. And you come to the point to the way to where you can't keep doing what you've always done. This message is about you, not somebody else, not your neighbor, not somebody else that's not here. I think that Jim told me, Jim told me, it is okay. <laughs> this is yours. All right. Sometimes you are at a fork in the road. Now you can keep on going. But you miss that because if you would take the time that God has tried to change you on. Know, He's got the blessing there. But you got in your mind, I'm young. You got in your mind, I can't do that. And you're going on. Bearing on that. God is so great. He lets you go so far. And then before you know it, then you're right here. We get way down there. And then you confuse something with it. I don't know what is happening in my life. I'm just miserable. I'm not no better. Not that I can't get worse. I don't know what I did. And all you got to do is drag that train up, come right back to where. What did God say to you last? Or all he told you was to come to the me? And all he told you come to the me? God, I'm good, but I, I have to watch these old souls, but it's really serious. It's the Lord, after. And now he's confused. Where are you at? Well, tell him what you're doing to make your life look like he's going to happen. Lord, I just don't know. What, Lord, I don't know why it's not working for me. We just don't have it. We just don't have it. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. There comes a point where you got to go the way you got to tell you to go. In this story, lots of sick people were all around. Everybody was waiting for the move of the Lord. The word in the Greek that was asking was that an angel would stir up the water. And whoever was the first one to get in there would be he. Now, God can do anything. You remember the name of the man to be And God had the name. Just in the water. How many times? So God can do anything. But I want to show you on this story. Everybody did this story. On this story, God is trying to stop this man and the Jews around here. Things are about the same. Jesus shows up. Now everybody is there. He shows up to this man who is, the Bible describes him as an impotent. I wrote it down like this. The impotent man runs into omnipotent Jesus. John 5, is that where y'all are? Come on, talk to me because it's almost time to go. Verse number 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. By the way, as we read later on, Jesus is going to find him. This is the part that I planted into before I'm about to run out of time. After Jesus healed him, and last week I told you, Jesus showed up to this man, John. He said, Now, the man is there with everybody else, but Jesus didn't go to everybody else. Like there are lots of people in here. But there's certain words that I've said, Jesus goes right in your face and says, Now you can be talking about you. He didn't go to everyone, but he was one man and he said this. Do you want to be made well? Yes, sir. Do you 
you want to be bold, and then the man gave all these excuses what I talked about last week. Yeah, right. Everybody said, no more excuses. Last week I talked about how quick makes the excuses. Do you want to be made wait? And now the certain man, yes, I do. And what happened is that Jesus healed him. He said, now, rise up, take him to bed, and walk. Yeah, right. Rise up, take him to bed. 